Demons are real. Demon possession is real. So I want to show you how to cast out demons. If you want to be spiritually equipped, subscribe to Encounter TV and click the notification bell when you do. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. The deliverance ministry of Jesus is the standard. And when you look at the deliverance ministry of Jesus, you'll notice that it was simple, it was straightforward, and it was powerful. His authority over demonic powers is absolute. You can drive out demons just like Jesus drove out demons. That same power, the same Holy Spirit dwells in you. Jesus did not have to use superstitious rituals. Jesus did not have to take these long, drawn-out sessions in order to expel demons from people. He did it instantly. He did it absolutely. He is our example. Now, if you want to drive out demons like Jesus drove out demons, you need to live the kind of lifestyle that Jesus lived. You must learn the basics before the battle. You see, we imagine that a lot of what we're going to apply, the spiritual warfare teachings that is, we imagine that we're going to apply a lot of that in the moment that we're driving the demons out. The reality is that the battle actually takes place before the moment that you confront demonic powers. You must be prepared with the basics before you go to expel demonic beings. Demon possession is real, as I said. Demon possession is real. And as believers, we must go and set the captives free. We must drive demons out of people. No one else can do it but the sons of God. Now, the basics, admittedly, don't always seem exciting. I think they're thrilling once you understand them, but they don't always seem exciting at face value. But it takes doing the seemingly boring basics in order to have true power. Because if you prepare yourself before entering that moment of exorcism, then when you step into that moment, the authority you carry will be absolute. The power you carry will drive out demons. I'm telling you, like sand castles under an ocean wave, the demonic powers will dissolve under the power of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 8, 16, when evening had come, they brought to him many who were possessed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and he healed all who were sick. How was it that he did it with a word? In my experience, I've noticed that demonic beings come out instantly so long as they know that you know your authority. If you allow demonic beings to have their moment, to make a show, to talk back, then of course they're going to take that opportunity. But when you as a child of God understand that there's no fight to be had, then demonic beings are expelled instantly, just how Jesus did it. Now, here are some keys I want to give you to being prepared for that moment. Again, this is not going to come through superstitious techniques or gimmicks or sessions or all of these things that we probably are bombarded with when it comes to this subject, but rather it's going to come through the basics. Now, number one, you must spend time in God's presence. People who carry the glory of God aren't concerned with spiritual warfare techniques. Why? Because the presence of God in them is that which expels demonic beings from people who are demon-possessed. Acts 4.13 says, The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training, in the scriptures, they also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. They could tell that these men had been with Jesus. Can people say the same about you? Think about the story in Mark chapter 9, where the disciples in the valley could not cast out the demon in the boy. It was only when Jesus came from the mountaintop to the valley that the demons were expelled. And Peter and John were, of course, with Jesus when he was at the mountaintop. The reason the disciples in the valley couldn't cast out the demons is because they weren't spending time with Jesus at the mountaintop. Only mountaintop believers can drive out demons in the valley. Walk in His presence, carry His presence, and His presence upon your life alone will expel demonic beings. Now, please hear me when I say, I by no means have any reason to brag. 
I, I'm not going to brag on myself because everything that God does through me is despite me and it's all Him. I say this to encourage you. There was a time when, when I would pray for people who were demon-possessed, it would take me two, three, four hours to get the demons out of them. But once I began to trust in the power of the Holy Spirit, once my eyes were opened and I saw the authority that God had given to me, it no longer took that amount of time. In my experience, as of now, when driving out demons, people receive their freedom instantly. I'm talking within seconds, at the most a couple of minutes. Why? Because of the power of the Holy Ghost. If you come to our services, when you see people delivered, it's a very quick process. The person will scream, fall on the floor, maybe convulse for a little bit, and then they get up rejoicing and their lives are transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not my ability, by the power of the Holy Spirit. But you see, when I try to do it in my own ability, when I try to do it in the flesh, when I try to do it in my own effort, that's when I have to reach for the techniques and the this and the that and the renouncing and the sessions and all of those things that just aren't in the Bible. But when you carry the glory of God on your life, when you walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and when He walks with you, more importantly, wherever you go, demons flee. Number two, the Word. You must know the Word. Mark chapter 1, I'm going to read verses 21 through 27. Jesus and His companions went to the town of Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, He went into the synagogues and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. Suddenly a man of the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus reprimanded him. Be quiet, come out of the man, he ordered. At that the evil spirit screamed, threw the man into a convulsion, and then came out of him. Amazement gripped the audience, and they began to discuss what had happened. What sort of new teaching is this, they asked directly. It has such authority, even evil spirits obey his orders. Now you notice here that this was a very simple deliverance process. Jesus said, go, and the demon went. Now, there are a couple examples of Jesus asking for a demon's name in the Bible, but really, he asked the demon's name, and the demon told him, but was out just seconds later, and that was as far as the conversations ever went. Now here we see an example of how to expel demonic powers. Jesus did it with a word, and he was able to do it with a word because he lived by the word. If you don't live by the word, you can't cast out demons with a word. It's only when you align your life with the authority of heaven that you can begin to exercise that heavenly authority. And I align my life with heavenly authority by aligning my life with the Word of God. You must know and live the Word. So time in God's presence, I'm talking about prayer. Time in the Word and living the Word. You must align your life with the Word. Number three, walk in humility. James chapter 4, verse 7 says, So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Before you can resist the devil, you must humble yourself before God. Now, I'm going to admit that when it came to spiritual warfare, I used to be very arrogant. Oh my goodness, nobody knew as much about spiritual warfare as I did. And if anybody tried to correct my theology on spiritual warfare, I would say things like, well, they haven't cast out as many demons as I have. Well, I have experience on my side. Or what are they doing for the deliverance ministry? It was just such arrogance. And God had to correct me. The Holy Spirit had to rebuke me. And thank God he rescued me from that type of religious thinking. But when I was doing it in what I thought was my own strength, when I applied what I thought was actual scriptural training, I didn't realize that I was actually using my own human effort. And in using my own human effort, the fight was difficult. I was tired after casting out demons. I mean, think about the fact that Jesus would drive out multiple demons and heal many sick people in one night. There's no way he could do that for as many people as he did it for if he was taking two, three, four hours on each individual. Again, his authority was absolute, 
And his power over the forces of darkness was evident. And so if you want to walk in that kind of power, you must humble yourself before God and recognize the power does not come from you. The power does not come from technique. The power does not come from religious process. The power comes from walking in humility, knowing that word and living that word and spending time in the presence of God. You do those things and you will see that authority come upon your life. Number four. Now, this is similar to knowing and living the word. What I'm talking about here when I say walk in holiness is sin. If you are not in right relationship with God, you as a believer have weakened your access to the authority of heaven. Acts chapter 19 verses 14 through 16 says this, seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. These are exorcists now. But one time when they tried it, The evil spirit replied, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. Bottom line, they didn't know Jesus. They weren't in right relationship with him. But when you align yourself in that way, there is true power. You know, whenever I see people go free from demonic beings, at least now. It's not like I used to. I mean, I, again, I used to spend hours. I tried all these techniques, all the sword of the spirit, and I'm going to torment the demon. I'm going to get information. It just, what actually began to happen was it produced more confusion in people's lives, and it made believers just paranoid walking under that type of religious thinking. And it is religious. It is religious. Remember, that whatever is religious will always be complex. Whatever is spiritual, though it may be hard to do, will always be simple in nature. But you know, when I see the way demons come out of people now, I'm amazed at the authority of the Holy Spirit. I'm amazed at His absolute power over demonic beings. I've seen people who were drug addicted and you see them transformed in an instant if that addiction is tied to a demonic power. And you'll see people have demons come out of them, multiple demons. I've seen multiple people have multiple demons come out of them at one time. Now, if it was in my own power, my own strength, that wouldn't be able to happen. I'd have to go to each individual. But I've seen in services multiple people manifesting at once and instantly delivered. I mean, the glory of God will show up and the weight of that glory will drive out every demonic power. That's what you can carry. If you want to do deliverance like Jesus did deliverance, you need to live like Jesus lived. Now, he's not looking for perfection per se because all of us will stumble in one area or another. But at least we must live a lifestyle where we hold to these foundational truths, where we live in such a way that God can allow his authority to flow through us. That's what he wants to do for you if you simply will walk with him. And if you walk with him in that way, then a simple command will drive out demonic beings. Father, I pray you help us do it. Give us the faith to trust in your absolute power over demonic beings. Help us to be freed, liberated from religious mindsets that would cause us to look in doing these things in our own strength. Lord, give us that authority as we give ourselves to you. Say that to him. Lord, give me your authority as I give myself to you. I align myself, tell him, I align myself with you and I place myself under your authority. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us power over demonic beings. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us the authority to set the captives free. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. Well, that's it for the message. Here now is a question for conversation. Why do you suppose some believers think that exorcisms have to take a long time? Let me know in the comment section. Now, here are some comments from a previous video titled, Exposing the Root of Idolatry, Why Some Stray from the One True God. Joy Comes in the Morning writes, Good message. We need to know now more than ever what idolatry is and how to keep from it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God bless you, Pastor David and your team. Catherine Meyer writes, this is beautiful. Thank you, Pastor David, for this pure truth. Our God is an awesome God. Boto K. Kati writes, each day I get renewed through your messages and worship songs. God bless you and your team, brother. 
The next commenter writes, Thank you, Brother David. This was a clearly explained teaching that clarifies so much, especially in life today. God bless you and the DHM family. And the final comment I'll read from this video comes from Gabby C., who writes, Powerful message. It blew my mind in realizing how subtle this sin could be that I subconsciously change my perception of God based on my emotions. Thank God for such a powerful revelation. May the Lord continue to bless you and your ministry and keep opening our eyes to His truth through your ministry. Now, one more time, if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. You will not regret it. We put out content that's gonna help you grow spiritually. And don't forget to click that notification bell so that you can actually get notified when we release videos. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. Now, hang on just for a moment because I wanna to talk to you about being a generous giver. You know, there's great joy in giving. If you're anything like me, then when you find that perfect gift for your loved one or for your friend or for your family member, then you're excited to give them that gift. You wanna see their face when they open the gift that you got them. You put thought into what you give to others. That's how believers are, that's how you are. You're a generous soul, someone who like their father is a giver. Well, think about the fact that you and I have been blessed with the opportunity to give out of love for Jesus himself. You see, when you give financially to ministries, you're not just giving to that ministry, you're giving through that ministry to the Lord. So I want to encourage you, give a one-time gift or become a monthly ministry supporter by going to davidhernandezministries.com. To give a one-time gift, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. To become a monthly supporter, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Everything counts, large or small, monthly or one-time. However the Holy Spirit is leading you, go and obey His voice and know that you're giving to the Lord out of joy, out of thankfulness. He's never held back from you. Don't hold back from Him. Help support the streams, the content, the events, and the Holy Spirit School, and much, much more. Be a part of it. Again, one-time gifts, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Become a monthly partner by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.